Welcome back to Huchos. So today we're going to discuss PAR or photosynthetically active radiation. A scientist's measurements are only as good as their measuring apparatus. So in order to give you the most accurate observations I can possibly make uh, to allow you to make informed decisions uh, on those observations, I've purchased this. This is an Apogee Instruments MQ500 quantum sensor. Don't tell my missus. <laughs> She'll kill me. So today we'll discuss why we use quantum sensors, what they measure, and how we can use those measurements to make informed decisions in the context of hydroponic growing. This is the latest uh, iteration of uh, quantum PAR sensors, and it's the most accurate quantum PAR sensor that I could get my hands on uh, to measure both uh, natural sunlight, LEDs, HPS, and all other array of light sources that we use to grow plants hydroponically. So let's unbox it. So to be completely frank, I was quite underwhelmed with the packaging. I mean, it's a scientific instrument and not a consumable device. So <laughs> why would you waste money on packaging? And this is gonna be a really simple unboxing. I'm pretty sure it's not that simple. There it is. <laughs> it's quite light too, and you, you notice how um, much they weight consumable devices just so that they feel more expensive. Uh, the quantum sensor itself has, you know, quite a bit of weight to it. So it comes with a battery. That's nice. Oh, that's cool. It's got uh, one of those camera mount points on the back, which will make it really easy for me to film it held up on an angle for the camera. I appreciate that. That's nice. It's solid too. Like it looks plasticky, but it's, it's nice. I mean, for the price tag, it should be. <laughs> and my favorite part of any new device, the peel. <laughs> oh, I love it. There goes the screw. Oh, that's weird. Why would they do that? Okay, so it's it's like a it's like a pull out the back and then slide out mechanism. <laughs> Rather than it doesn't just oh, such an expensive device. Why would they do that to me? How do I even fit a battery in that? It's like every scientific instrument that I've ever used has the hardest battery to install. And it doesn't even tell you which way up it goes. Oh, that's okay, let's try that. Nope. <laughs> All right. Ah. Yes, it's working. <laughs> It's on zero at the moment. So the quantum sensor itself has this neat little screw, which is going to be good because I'm going to attach it to a plate, uh, which will allow me to um, have it in a set grid for the measurement of uh, par from grow lights uh, over a set area. It's, it's actually really attractive. <laughs> I love this design and the color too. The latest iteration of this um, power sensor comes in blue. The one before was silver and the one before that was black with a, with a smaller uh, sensor on the top. Um, but they weren't as accurate. Anyway, we'll discuss that later.
in this room a quantum flux of two. <laughs> not, not growing any plants in here, obviously. <laughs> so let's discuss what this device actually measures. As you can guess, uh, as a quantum meter, it measures quantums. Now, when you're talking about light, uh, one quantum of light is one photon. However, if we were measuring photons, we would measure flux. So this meter actually measures photosynthetically active photons uh, within the range of about 400 to 700 nanometers. So uh, this number is, you know, highly controversial, but uh, most studies have found that uh, most plant growth happens within those numbers, uh, which is why this meter is calibrated uh, to observe light active within those uh parameters. All of the heavy lifting in this meter is done by uh, essentially the PAR sensor at the end. Uh, it outputs an analog number, which is then interpreted by the quantum meter. And that number is the PPFD, which is the incident number of photons on the meter per second. Now, the reason that I've chosen this newer meter and not the older iterations of the Apogee Instruments uh, quantum sensors is because this newer quantum sensor can measure the ranges that LEDs output. So uh, LEDs will tend to have very narrow bands of light output depending on the diode. Uh, and with some of the older sensors, the LED output was outside of the range of the sensor uh, to measure, which means that you could uh, miss major chunks of usable light for the plants when measuring uh, and taking samples from those lights, which would throw your results if you were to... Uh, translate those numbers into efficacy numbers. Now, that is essentially the reason why I have invested in one of these meters. I am looking to find uh, objective efficacy numbers for LED lights um, so that I can give you the tools to make the best decision when uh, investing in LED light technology or HPS light technology or uh, CMH light technology uh, so that you have uh, objective numbers to work with so that you can uh, invest your money in a light that's going to give you uh, the most cost-effective uh, energy effective and plant growth effective outcome uh, in whatever situation you are growing in. So let's take it for a spin. Now, if you've made it this far, congratulations, you get a preview of an upcoming video. <laughs> this is my stealth grow room and this is um, an out of control plant. <laughs> anyway, um, so using the quantum sensor, I can actually measure uh, the photosynthetically active radiation that uh, this light, which is a Mars Hydro TS-1000, links in the description, is outputting um, and what is usable by the plant itself. So, <laughs> If I turn on the quantum sensor and then put it at canopy's height, I can see that in the center of the canopy, the photosynthetically active radiation 
is 950 umoles uh, per meter squared per second. So that gives me the PPFD of the canopy. So with these measurements, I can happily raise the light slightly um, because the ideal PPFD for uh, a canopy like this would probably be in the range of about 700. So I'll go ahead and do that. <clears throat> So now I can just retake the measurement and I'm looking at a canopy PPFD of about 750. And that's ideal for the amount of growth that I want from this plant. It also allows some of the lower leaves uh, to be photosynthetically active as well um, without sacrificing the higher leaves um, it gives an all-round good PPFD for the current situation. Now, before we go on to the next section of the video, I just want to show you um, the difference that the inverse square law makes uh, when considering light from natural sources versus light from artificial sources. Um, the main natural source obviously being the sun. If I move the quantum sensor from this location down a couple of inches, you can see that the usable light drops off significantly. This is the inverse square law. So as you get further away from a light source, the light drops rapidly. Now, when I go outside and we measure the light on my NFT hydroponic system, you'll see that this isn't the case because the distance that the power sensor is traveling compared to the overall distance that the light has to travel from the sun is insignificant compared to the distance that the PAR sensor is traveling now to the overall distance that the PAR sensor is from the light source. So this is another factor that we have to take into consideration when looking at quantum measurements. So it's currently 21 degrees here. It's a very overcast day. So, uh, there's not gonna be much sun. And we'll be able to take readings on a cloudy day and then perhaps compare them to readings on a sunny day. So let's take some readings on the beans and all of the plants that are in the flood and drain and have a look at how the inverse square law affects the quantum sensor in an outside environment. All right. So as you can probably tell by the angle of the beans leaves, the sun is over there in the sky, which is north for me because I'm in the Southern Hemisphere. So if we take a reading, pointing the sensor in the direction that the leaves are pointing, uh, because it's acting as a solar panel essentially, we get a reading of about 257. Now, it's winter here, and the sun is pretty low in the sky for our longitude, latitude location. And this is a very low reading. This is um, lower than I expected, actually. But it is a cloudy day in winter, so still a lot of usable photosynthetically active radiation, but you will see a decline in plant growth uh, with these numbers.
So I'm now at the flood and drain bed. Um, as you can see, again, the leaves are all facing north towards the sun. And we'll take some more readings. Three hundred and eighty-eight, four hundred. So about four hundred. Now the sun has come out from behind a cloud, obviously, or has gone into a less dense cloud, and you're seeing the difference that cloud cover can make. Now, here is a good place to show you that the height of the quantum sensor. is really not affecting the mean value. And that's the inverse square law in effect, or not in effect, uh, because the distance that I'm covering as a percentage of the distance that the light has to travel from the light source is insignificant, really. So the inverse square law uh, doesn't have much of an effect um, on the final reading or the light absorbed by the plants. Just quickly though, <laughs> I was just back here and um, I got a monster the other day. <laughs> but have a go at that one. <clears throat> There's another one back there too. Hang on. Ooh. Oh, I like to get them when they're that size. <laughs> All right, is there more? Yep. Have a go at that fella. Someone's had a nibble at it. <laughs> That's, <laughs> I love hydroponics. So I'm not saying go out and buy one of these by any means. The reason I bought it is because I'm in the unique position that uh, I will get my money's worth out of this device. And I'll be able to pass uh, that knowledge on to an audience. So if you have any requests for uh, videos about uh, different uses for this device, scenarios that I may not think of myself, please feel free to leave them in the comments below this video. And I'll do my best uh, to accurately make those observations to pass on to you. All right. I hope you enjoyed this episode of Who Chose. I have a heap of grow light tests, standard uh, hardware light tests, uh, sun, cloud, you name the type of light and I want to test it and uh, pass that information on. Thanks for watching. I'll see you next time. Happy hydroponicking.